We've also been watching currencies very closely. Of course, the U.S. dollar has been seeing strength compared to other currencies this year, although we're seeing a little bit of a reversal today. We've seen a weaker yen, a policy-hammered pound contributing to ripples in Forex overall. And the markets are now watching for how a downward shift in U.S. equity is set to hit currencies Amidst all of this Fed speak, joining us with more is Atsi Seth, who is Moody's Investor Service Managing Director. Atsi, good to see you. So we have been watching, obviously, a lot of turmoil occurring in the currency market. What should investors be bracing for now? It doesn't feel like necessarily that strengthening of the U.S. dollar is over. No, I wouldn't say it is. And, you know, the reason the dollar is strengthening, you know, comes from multiple sources. The first is any time you have uncertainty and geopolitical risks and macroeconomic uncertainty around the world, the dollar benefits a safe haven status. So that's one. The second is the Fed's been much more aggressive in hiking rates than its peer banks, whether it's the ECB or the Bank of Japan. So that's, again, strengthening the dollar. And then third, of course, I mean, you, you referenced the pound, where there's sort of idiosyncratic reasons for that particular currency uh, to be very volatile in the last couple of days. So very, very many different reasons. And like you said, dollar strength is here for a while, as long as that interest rate differential remains, as long as uncertainty remains. And so what, what is the reality of the continued impact of, uh, of some of the kind of foreign exchange calculus that is taking place and, and the kind of longer term implications of that? Sure. You know, so if you think about an investor and, and you sort of separate the pound where, again, the government, uh, the British government borrows in sterling. Uh, so the pound going up and down doesn't really affect the exchange rate doesn't affect the borrowing cost. The yields might might affect the borrowing cost, but the exchange rates don't. Whereas if you think about emerging markets around the world, there, wherever they borrow in U.S. dollars, this sort of exchange rate turmoil can really increase borrowing costs for the governments, for the corporates in those emerging markets. So that's one thing from an investment perspective. The currency turmoil translates into debt repayment costs immediately. And that then affects actually the, the refinancing risk for those uh, entities. Atsi, one thing I was reminded about uh, rereading the, the annual report for Nike, they of course report earnings later in the week, is big companies like Nike, they hedge against foreign currency risk. How should big companies be employing hedges in this environment? Because ultimately, that may impact their profits and then, by extension, may impact their stock price. Yeah, and, and it's particularly true. I mean, I think the, the data is now that about 30% of the largest U.S. companies earn you know, their, their um, revenues from outside the U.S. And so anytime the dollar strengthens as much as it has now, uh, your revenues are going to be affected just, just because of exchange rate risk. And I think most, you know, most uh, companies that have that exposure are aware of this and, and that the hedging is likely to be in place if, if it isn't already, will be definitely in place. So I think most companies are aware of it. It is those companies that at the margin, you know, even if you have 10% exposure and you don't think you need a hedge because, you know, you're not expecting as much volatility, that's where the impact when your, your currency is strengthening, you know, by 5%, 10% against others, you feel impact even if you're at 10% revenues from outside. So, Atsi, to put it all together, at a time when we are seeing global growth slowing, we are also seeing dollar strengthening, other currencies weakening, which has disadvantages for both sides. We're seeing credit costs climbing. I mean, it just seems like it's sort of pain piling on pain at a time of economic vulnerability. Yes, it is. And, you know, if there is one silver lining to your currency depreciating, it is that it makes your exports more attractive and it, you know, uh, and that should help your growth as well. But your currency depreciating at a time when growth is, <clears throat> excuse me, going down means that the, the sort of the export momentum is low anyway. So even that silver lining is slightly burnished, I, I, I would say. Um, you know, in a time of currency depreciation, those companies and countries that have deep domestic capital markets tend to benefit because at least you can borrow in your own currency and you can finance yourself or refinance your debt at a time that your currency is depreciating. But yes. Overall, a sobering and, and sort of slightly negative picture for the next couple of quarters. I, I like your quest for silver linings, though. I appreciate that always. Atsi, thank you so much for being here. Atsi said, uh, Moody's Investor Service Managing Director. Appreciate it.